Hi, my name's Lindy Cowling and welcome to my channel. My website is www.lindycowling.co.uk. My email is info at lindycowling.co.uk. Well, the title of this video today is Crucial to Union where the inner child within fits in. So where the inner child within fits in, crucial to union. So where I'm going to start on this is at the point of what I mean by the inner child. So, the inner child is a state of our own consciousness and our inner child can express through people in different ways. At its most adverse, the inner child can behave through an adult, almost like a very spoilt child, a willful child, a destructive child, and the behaviour can be very juvenile, very selfish. At its most positive end of the spectrum, the inner child consciousness, which is us, a state of our consciousness, and I'm going to go into all that in a minute, at its other end of the spectrum can be joyful, delightful, playful, almost like a purity and innocence. Now, where this state of consciousness, this child within, fits into our lives has huge impacts upon us. And as you know, on this channel, I only speak from states of awareness that I have experienced, am embodying, have experience of from my perspective so it comes through my filtration system and out to you. So I don't repeat um, from other people's stuff, I experience it first hand and whilst I might reference other people's work because it's helpful I always come from a place of experience and the realisation myself. So the reason I'm bringing this out now is because it's been a very recent realisation in myself. And although working in the therapy professions for 16 years, I have heard multiple references to inner child healing, inner child work, um, all kinds of stuff and the psychotherapy side of it, you know, the psychology side of it, the healing side of it. I've never been particularly drawn to that, particularly interested in that. And it's only been very recently in my own evolution that I have come to that layer. Because as I've spoke before, I mean, in, in an earlier video I did called Layer Cake, everything is in layers of our awareness, layers of consciousness. And as the, the veils of illusion come down and as our frequency and vibration raises and as we start to see through the eyes of the heart, hear through the ears of the heart, sense through the heart, we have... A different state of perception and a different state of consciousness and a different state of awareness and as we know ascension is the descension of spiritual consciousness in through the soul into the portal of the heart and it hasn't been until very very recently that I have reached a stage in my own awareness and consciousness where I have realised, and that's why I'm sharing it with you guys, that the 
part of our evolution that concerns the inner child is absolutely crucial. And where the majority of humanity trip up, fall down, get caught up, get entangled, get stuck, is in the expression of consciousness of inner child. And as I just said before, it has its polarity, the childlike state of consciousness in us, as it expresses out through our energy body, expresses through our personality, in very delightful ways, but also can be in very willful ways. And these are almost all below the level of awareness and consciousness. They are in what we call the unconscious mind, the subconscious mind. They are way back in our uh, conscious concept. So it's not a deliberate thing, but they are crucial to our spiritual evolution and crucial to twin flame union, to soulmates, to catalysts, to every being that embodies the soul on this planet. This is a crucial part of the process. You know, nothing to do with whether you've even met a twin flame, a soulmate or a catalyst. This is, this is referencing every single being that has a soul on this planet. The inner child part of it is crucial. The inner child within is crucial. Honouring that child, recognising that that is part of your consciousness, not separate from your consciousness, in fact it's at the heart of it, and I'll go into that in a minute, is crucial to this. And I'll go into that towards the end. What I'm going to say now is, as part of our life experiences, that inner child can get very, very frightened and sometimes it can get damaged. Just like a real child, a real physical child can get frightened or damaged. According to the life situations and the experiences that you have had or are having. And so, for example, if you are or were brought up in a violent household or a very narcissistic controlling household or uh, you grew up with sexual abuse, um, you know, I'm just using these as examples, you may not have been brought up in any of those. The child within can almost be afraid to, and the, the word would be afraid, fearful, not feel safe, in some ways rightly so, um, frightened to express itself or, or develop or show itself in the way that it would like to. So it, it like a real living physical child, it will run, it will hide, it will crawl under the table, hide behind the chairs, stop, freeze, modify its behavior and I'm saying it's I'm saying it as a way of explaining this as if it was a real physical child doing this just to explain it uh, the child would say things perhaps because it was afraid of the consequences to please people around them um, the child would not act in its most um, authentic way natural way it would it would be afraid of the consequences not feel safe the inner child in this sense can become almost like wounded and now now I'm using the example of a physical child now I'm flipping back to the inner child as consciousness just giving you some examples of how the inner child can become distorted, very, very frightened, almost like stuck um, and not feel like expression its most joyful self anymore. And of course this plays out, this is part of your consciousness, our consciousness, through the soul. So let me give you another example. I'm going to give you an example here. So a seven-year-old boy His mother has affairs and decides she's going to split up with the father and divorce. 
and this boy is mortified because he's been brought up in a very narcissistic by a very narcissistic mother and a very controlled environment and he idolizes his both his mother and his father and never saw this coming and comes home from school and the, and the suitcases are packed no warning and the father has actually been asked to leave the situation by the mother so the boy has already had quite a fair bit of damage to the inner child anyway because he's had narcissistic mother controlling him since birth so devastated by this that lies for the rest of his school life so that the pupils and his friends don't even know that his parents have got divorced i'm citing a true case here by the way so keeps the what he perceives as shame and the horror of it all inside and he and he freezes that so that the real seven-year-old physical child has experienced that and perceived it that way because of the distorted way uh, he has been brought up it has to go through that that distorted perceptual fil filter he's felt the real trauma of that but also as a not just the seven-year-old boy but he has experienced that in his inner, inner consciousness inner child consciousness and that has become almost like a snapshot frozen frozen in time so then we fast forward into this man's life many years ahead and when he gets the biggest opportunity that his soul could ever manifest for him to recognize his own divinity and move forward to the greatest part of his well the, the greatest part of his purpose uh, to essentially achieve what he came to achieve both for himself and for his family and everyone else he replays subconsciously and consciously so has awareness on both these levels of, because the, the ho what he perceives as the horror story of what took place when he was seven and because he's not just perceiving it as an adult man remembering the seven-year-old boy's experience but he's perceiving it through inner child consciousness too he's actually reliving it as the inner child and feeling the inner child and how he felt his whole world went upside down the shame what will other people think really powerful you know he got hide it for years that his parents are divorced uh all of this side of it this person actually then derails his entire highest outcome of his timeline because he is too afraid of experiencing within his inner child consciousness reliving that again or how he distorted and played that out as he was afraid of revisiting that on his own children what happened to his inner child consciousness and him as a seven-year-old child he was terrified to the point of derailing his entire timeline and turning his back on his own ascension of, re of revisiting that on his own children now i'm using this as an example because that's a real example of showing how extreme the experience of our consciousness as inner child can affect present time and what's going on in our timeline now and actually affect the decisions we make now based on what state of consciousness our inner child is in is that inner child wounded is that inner child afraid is that inner child um really sad or really angry because it either isn't being listened to isn't being expressed through the personality to its highest outcome i keep saying it but it's it's our consciousness also has it had 
uh, the inner child damage or distortions through the environment that the child was brought up in or the child which is now an adult was brought up in and certain pockets of that consciousness can become almost frozen in time almost like frozen in the energy field almost like frozen in the body or like I say or the, the energy the entire energy field adding a wider picture to this a bigger perception to this is that we now know through epigenetics, not just genetics from epigenetics, which is now scientifically proven, that we can, all of us, humanity, or anyone that has a soul, we can take on the thoughts, feelings and emotions of our families and our bloodlines and we can widen that to if it's a, a kind of a big enough thing we can take that on for the entire family and have that play out through that consciousness so let me use the example of the seven-year-old boy again if the seven-year-old boy's narcissistic mother who used love as a weapon, as a means of control, had that distortion coming down through her because of how she was brought up and how love was not natural but controlled in a way that she um, took on that behaviour and took on the replication if you like of that inner consciousness from her parents or wherever that came from then you can see the huge ramifications of this timeline after timeline in in that family playing out over and over again that same thing and through epigenetics can be handed down directly to their children their children that had nothing to do with it because it's been repeated in in consciousness or locked in consciousness in their the, the adults around them in what is now their parents the seven-year-old boy as the parent of the children and so it goes on and so it goes on so it is absolutely crucial to one's union within and everything without to recognize, fully recognize and understand and sing home the inner child, to recognize that that is a valid and crucial state of present consciousness, that the inner child is not something that is supposed to be stuck in what we call the past that we know everything is now but in our perception of the past but that it is a crucial part of our consciousness now and in order to heal from mental uh, distress emotional distress all of which can distort as physical disease disease in order to heal from this, we must welcome home the inner child consciousness within us. And there are many ways we can do this. Apart from the conventional routes of going and seeing a therapist that does inner child healing, that does the psychotherapy side of it, or the healing side of it there, you can um, basically turn your awareness inward and recognize the child within you and it doesn't matter how old you are there are people 70 80 90 they pass over they die they leave this timeline and they're and they're they're fully their their inner child they're fully in touch with their inner child or their inner child is running the show for them in either a joyful way or an absolute hellish destructive way because as we know 
Um, you know, some children, real physical children, can throw tantrums, can be very destructive, can be very distressed, and also some some balance in between, and also the other end of the spectrum, almost like angelic like. Same as, as that consciousness within us as adults. Some people can effectively seriously damage their timeline or, or even be have very destructive lives because they are ruled by a damaged state of their own child consciousness. So if one doesn't choose the conventional route of, of getting some therapy for the inner child, then basically you turn your awareness inward and you start communicating with your inner child and you start recognising it because once you recognise and validate your inner child, things start to shift, things start to unlock, the codes start to unlock, things start to move. The child gives a huge sigh of relief like, thank, thank God at last I've been heard and again it's not a separate child inside of you it's part of your consciousness and it's the crucial part which i'm going to get to in a moment the crucial part of this video you can sing your child home you can call it with sound you can literally sing your child home so that your your child state of consciousness feels safe that's the primary thing here they feel safe safe for you to to almost like embrace I mean a technique you know we're using NLP and hypnotherapy and um, there are other therapies that use this as well is that you can talk to the inner child and then you can communicate to your inner child as the adult you are now but feeling the child through you and and so that you embrace sit with them you know work with them like that or it might not be as in depth as that it's just recognizing that you have got a state of inner childness in you that needs to be recognized that needs um that respect that needs that honoring that needs that cuddling that needs to be brought home to the heart needs to be brought home to the heart you can sing them home you can sound them home you can communicate within your mind or your awareness you can meditate and communicate with your inner child there are more of us that get derailed. In fact, I would go as far as to say most people get derailed because they are caught up in their emotional or mental body which is intricately interwoven with that state of child consciousness. And as soon as you have that aha moment, hang on a minute, and you ha get to a state of awareness within yourself when you realise that, then things can really significantly change. Because when the child of you, the child of you isn't being heard, and is very, very sad or very frightened or quite damaged, and that's a state of consciousness that's damaged, don't forget, things can be healed. You're not stuck damaged like that. Once that is recognised, um, th this is responsible you know for for huge amount of addictions all kinds of addictions and numbing out and all kinds of things here and it's how the child like consciousness perceives things and i can say through personal experience personal experience that during my stages of my biggest spiritual evolution during the most traumatic sides of that, I experienced the hits that I took as a child. I did not experience them as a, as a mature woman. And it, be, and it became like a horror story. It was horrific because I did not take those hits as a woman. I took that as a seven-year-old child i recognized that at the time and voiced it at the time but it made no difference to the events that followed and that's why it was so traumatizing and went on to put severe post-traumatic stress disorder and everything else 
because my consciousness as an inner child had partially gone into lockdown because I was brought up in a very traumatic background so learned very early on many defense mechanisms you know some that I were well beyond the level of my understanding still but learned very clever techniques to um, protect actually myself so it's crucial this is crucial and I'm going to go to one last part of this video now and say you could say to me why do we have inner child consciousness then what's the purpose of it then why not when we we're not a physical child why do we have that and the key is the heart because inner child consciousness is an entry point to the portal of the heart and this is something i've been teaching um, in workshops and at public events since 2011 because my higher self guidance was and still is that one of the entry points one of the sounds one of the vibrations to the entry point of the heart is a childlike not adult like a childlike state of joy people like Greg Braden and people like Institute of Heart Math would would um, say or go a stage further or, or come up with a different perspective and say that they feel that it's um, a state of gratitude and I would agree that gratitude love without any connotations to that and uh, equally you know can open that portal but I know full well also joy and it's a childlike joy which is why when I when I use that example I say try and tap into a childlike memory like on the beach in the sand or something like that and if my clients have got very damaged childhoods and they can't feel of it think of a joyful childlike memory then we we create one because it doesn't make any difference if you create that memory or if it's a real memory it can still activate because it's the sound and the vibration it's the feel the feel of it that opens the heart so that is why we still have this state of consciousness that's why we we're not supposed to outgrow that state of consciousness we're actually supposed to go back and embrace and honor that state of consciousness because that is <laughs> I've got my cat here now. That is a hello, hello. That is a key, one of the codes that get you into that beautiful heart state. And that's why it's essential, it's an essential part of our evolution, an essential part of our healing, and an essential part. Of, I've got a very loved up cat of being in our hearts you know moving forward hello hello getting head butted by my cat into our heart and on that note I'm going to love you and leave you before my cat licks me to death um I hope that made sense I really hope that made sense because I know it's crucial. I, it's crucial to union, the union with all that is within you, um, outside of you. And it's a crucial part of humanity's evolution. So whatever way you can acknowledge, be aware of, bring home your inner child, work with your inner child. Just being aware sometimes. You have to work with them sometimes. It's just... Being aware of your inner child, you, you will get a sense of that, the relief that brings and know that you're on the, the right tracks. There'll be a lightness about it. On that note, I will love you and leave you much longer video than I intended again, but I couldn't cut this one short. Uh, take care of yourselves. Thank you for watching. Thank you for resonating and uh, I will see you again. Bye. Bye-bye.